there are probably few genealogists that are so advanced that they don't get something out of reading the quarterly. Most of my education came from NGS. Uh, between the quarterly and then as an author being edited by Elizabeth Mills in article after article after article, the quarterly was founded in 1912, so a lot of people don't realize how well established it is, and it has a long history of distinguished editors. 1979, uh, when I started reading it, uh, George Ely Russell was the editor, and within a year or two um, of my subscription starting, Elizabeth Schoen Mills and her husband Gary Mills became the editor. Every three months, the quarterly started arriving in my mailbox. And these were ar containing articles written by accomplished researchers who were looking at research and evidence and records in a totally different way than I had been able to based on what I was picking up on my own. You know, really looking at evidence, looking below the surface, putting the pieces together to make a picture, even though no one source contained the picture. That's what I was looking for, is the one source that would give me the picture. What these authors were doing was showing me how to put together, to find the different pieces of the puzzle and put them together myself and make a picture that no one else knew about because with the passage of time it had been forgotten. And it was just a tremendous education for me as each one of those issues arrived, I devoured them, sat down and read them uh, from cover to cover you know, as soon as I got to the mail. And, you know, since then I've become editor of the quarterly, and I still hear this from readers of that quarterly, that they sit down and read it from cover to cover. And what a lot of the NGS members understand is even though none of those issues contain nothing about their family, uh, certainly those issues I devoured contain nothing about my family, a lot of them didn't even contain research in the geographic areas that I was interested in, they were still of value to me because they showed me how to do research, how to work with evidence, how to build a case. The techniques, the skills that I needed to break through the brick walls when I got beyond what just the records were telling me on the surface. I was a college professor. I had been published in peer-reviewed journals 20 or 30 times. You know, I knew how to write. I knew about the editing process. And I would send off papers to these academic journals, and they'd change a word here, a citation format here or there, and that would be it. So I sent this off to Elizabeth, and I was thrilled that it was accepted. And, um, you know, three, four, five months later, she sends me the edited manuscript in the mail. Uh, this is before the internet, before email. So I open up the package, and I read the first page, and that's very good. Turn the page. Oh, that's very good. About the third or fourth page, oh, there's something I wrote. The amount of editing that she had done was just massive, but it was a much better article. It was, you know, she saw the educational value of what I had done, and you know, here I'm a career educator, and I had not seen that in the genealogical context, and she really pulled that out and put it in a context that people who were not interested in this family at all would see how the methodology that I used was something that they could use to solve problems uh, with their own families. Most of the articles in the quarterly are, pers are about people's personal research. Uh, even though the authors are skilled authors, um, you know, usually at least intermediate researchers, if not advanced researchers, most of them are writing about their families, about their ancestors, about the research they've done, uh, but not about their families, about the methodology that they used to solve the difficult problems. And the reason that they had the difficult problems is because they stuck with their family research until they were able to solve it and instead of dropping it when, it when it got hard. Elizabeth and Gary made it into a journal that both sh demonstrated high quality research but also explained it. There was a much stronger educational piece and a much stronger methodological focus after Elizabeth's um, and Gary's editorship began. By 2002, Gary had 
passed away. And Elizabeth uh, continued the editorship on her own for a year or two. And then uh, she announced her retirement. And um, NGS asked for um, proposals for future editors. And Clara Patak and I put in a joint proposal that the uh, committee considered along with other people. And they, we were very fortunate to have been selected as the editors. And I've now done it. Uh, Clara and I did it together for three years. And then uh, Melinda Sanborn and I have done it for three years together. And now we're on our fourth year. So this will be my seventh year as editor. And I love it. Uh, there's very little I've done in my life that I've enjoyed after two or three years. Uh, there have been a few things, several notable things. But editing the quarterly, every article I work with is a learning experience. You know, it offers different challenges in terms of the genealogy and in terms of the writing piece and the editing that's needed. So it's a constant learning, and it's just, just a lot of fun. It's a blast. <laughs>